If you've always wondered how to roast coffee to use for your espresso maker at home and you want to roast coffee at home, then this is the video for you. Stick around. All right, thank you for joining me today and welcome to the Virtual Coffee Lab. We are going to be using the Beemore 1600 Plus. This is a Beemore that I've had for many years. It's been a great roaster and I'm just going to use this. I could use any roaster to do this roast, but I wanted to do it on the Beemore because I've had many requests from Beemore users on how they would do an espresso roast and they wanted to see me do it. So if you don't have a Beemore, this still applies to you. We talk about basic roasting concepts and I'm going to be walking through what I'm thinking about, what I'm planning for, and how I'm going to do it here on this roaster. But you can apply these same concepts, these ideas, these practices to whatever roaster you have. Of course, there'll be some variations, but regardless, the idea is the same. The concepts are the same. My video that I did last with the Beemore was just a Beemore roasting recipe. And so this recipe would be more towards the darker side. Uh, we are not going to hit second crack. And we're going to get the roaster warmed up right now and get things started. And I'm going to show you how I did it. Every roaster that you use, it's a good idea to pre-warm it. Um, the Beemore, I am doing kind of a double pre-warming. So I did a pre-warm up to about 200 degrees and then I shut the roaster off. And let it sit for a few minutes and then I did the same thing all over again. Uh, I wanted to make sure that the roaster was really warm all the way through. So I did the pre-warm. I actually pre-warmed up to 250 degrees with the chaff tray in place, but not the cage itself. I want to try to get as much momentum going here in the roast as I could. Place that all back in the roaster. So I've started the roast half a pound setting on the beam more. I have a half a pound of beans in the beam more. And I'm starting the roast on P1 setting, the automatic setting, and it's 12 minutes and I hit start and I charge the roaster. I'm using a coffee app and I'll have a link for it here in this video so you can check it out. It's free to use and it's going to help me just monitor my development time and also act as my timer. You can see that I'm writing on a piece of paper and I am marking down the times and the temperatures every 30 seconds. I'm doing that by pressing the B button on the Beemore, and that is the environmental temperature of the Beemore. I'm not using the A button at all, and I'm strictly using the B button all the way through. In, in my own opinion, this is just my opinion, um, you really can't use the A button until you're a good part of the way into the roast and the fan kicks on. Um, and for me, I'm able to have more consistency and kind of know a little bit more about what's going on by using the B temperature. All right, you can see that the first 30 seconds I have still at leveled off here. I'm at 250 degrees. And now I've gone into the manual mode. I press the P5 button on the roaster that puts me in the manual mode. It does that, um, and the way the beam more works is that P5 is now 100% power. It's the complete opposite of the automatic mode on a Beemore. So just be aware of that. P5 is 100% power and that's where we're at right now. And the timer on the app says we're at one minute and 30 seconds and you can see the temperatures starting to climb. Why am I writing these temperatures down? Um, I, I am because of several reasons. One, it gives me an idea of my roast progress and the temperature um, in the environment. Number two, it ensures that I'm moving in an upward trend. And number three, I can monitor basically my limit to how hot I want to get this roaster without having to worry about it overheating or shutting down because uh, it gets too hot. 320 degrees is really the max temperature I want this roaster to get to. And I'm working my way up to that temperature. That's my goal is to get up to 320 degrees. That will be my peak in my... Um, rate of rise and then from that point on I'm going to slowly start to descend in my rate of rise. So we are at 282 degrees at 2 minutes. 293 now is what is displayed at 230 and when I start to manage my heat you'll see that I press a different P button 
and I'm going to mark that or make a note of that on the display so that you can see that. I want you to be able to see when I change my power settings. All right, so I want to talk about espresso roasts really quick. First of all, um, roasting for espresso is a good term. An espresso roast really is a little misleading because um, espresso is not a roast level or a roast style. It really is, it's, it's a brew method. And really we're going to be grinding our coffee very fine and it's going to be applied under pressure in an espresso um, machine for about 30 seconds. Um, hot water, high pressure through that um, puck or that uh, coffee that is in the espresso machine. So espresso is a brew method. It is not a roast level. But what we are going to do is craft our coffee so that it works well with an espresso um, brew method. And why are we doing that? Because espresso's, um, espresso brew method really requires the coffee to be very soluble. We need to be able to have hot water and that pressure extract as much of the flavor from the coffee as possible. So we grind our coffee in a very fine way and we um, have coffee that is soluble. And how do we do that? We usually have coffee that is roasted and more well developed. Not necessarily burned, or not even going into second crack, but just a really well developed coffee because that basically um, the coffee becomes more porous and the extraction or the solubility of the, the grounds is at a higher rate when you do that. So we're going to be looking for a very well developed coffee. All right, so we are at four minutes and 45 seconds on the roast and I've already adjusted my heat. You can see it in my notes that we've moved down to P4 and P3 and the reason why is because there's that temperature. I wanted to stay at my max around 320. We got really close to 325 and I, that is really living on the edge on the B-more uh, because it's got that safety shutdown feature. And so I want that to get down to the 320, 315 degree range. Now at five minutes on the B-more the fan kicks on and so you're going to see me increase the power. I just increased it to P5 and that's because the fan kicked on after five minutes and I'm starting to lose my heat. You'll watch my temperature drop. Um, 295 is what we've got now. We went from 320 down to 295 degrees in just 30 seconds. I should have compensated that a little bit more um, but I was so close to that safety zone that um, edge of overheating that I kind of balked. I kind of held off and waited a little bit. Um, but that's okay. So we're at six minutes. My goal is to have first crack happen here pretty soon. And um, then that will end the dry phase. So I'm at 100% power still. And I'm checking the color, looking to make sure. And it looks like we are going to hit dry here in about 10 seconds. The Beemore has that orange light. There's uh, some people that have changed to an LED light to give it more of a white hue so you can see the bean color better. Other people use a flashlight and um, I was able to see well enough to know that I hit dry end. at 6 minutes and 30 seconds, 295 degrees. And so I am on this track I want to stay, I don't want my temperatures to drop too much, and I want to slowly work my way down, slowly. And it's not going to be a perfect descending rate of rise, but I want to um, give myself enough time in this next phase that we just entered, the browning phase, to allow the complex flavors to develop, uh, these chemical reactions, um, uh, the structure of the bean changing because of heat, and we've got all these wonderful flavors and also caramelization that takes place. I did a video talking about this. It's how to roast sweet and flavorful or sweet and fruity coffee. I think it's sweet and flavorful coffee. And that talks about this browning phase and the things that happen during that phase. So I want to stretch this phase out. My goal is to be able to get a good 30% uh, or more 
of my roast time devoted towards the browning phase. Um, the dry phase, my goal is to have it be under 50% and then about 20%, a good solid 20% development for this coffee. All right, we are at seven, eight minutes and eight minutes is gonna show us 297 degrees. So our temperatures have uh, come down. I'm trying to stretch out this browning phase. We do that by making sure that our temperatures aren't constantly increasing so that the time will be shorter and the roasts go faster. I'm, I'm gently, easily um, easing the um, process, slowing it down slowly so that I can get this time that I want in here for the browning phase. Okay, I'm managing my heat along the way. You can see at seven minutes, I was at P4, at 7.30, P3, and then I bumped it back up to P4 at eight minutes. So I'm, I'm watching to make sure I don't crash and lose my momentum. And I'm also watching to make sure that I don't pop and take off and um, go too quick and, and rush through. That's one of the mistakes that um, roasters can easily make is they don't pay attention to their heat and they have so much heat and momentum built up that they just go through this browning phase really quick. They hear first crack, they get all excited, and the next thing you know, they, they go from a crack to a snap and they're in second crack and they don't even know it. And so we want to avoid that from happening. All right, we're at nine minutes, 286 degrees, and we're hoping to get about another minute and a half in before we hit first crack. I'm at P4, checking my color, I'm smelling, I just waft <laughs> for smell because I want to be fully aware of what's happening to these beans. I'm listening to them, I'm smelling them along the way, and I'm looking at the beans as well, watching my temperatures as this whole process unfolds. It's pretty cool. It, I'm starting to smell a lot of sweetness, and it's like, wow, this is going to be some really good coffee. If I didn't mention the type of coffee, it's a Guatemalan Weiwei. I absolutely love this coffee. If you've ever or if you've never roasted a Guatemalan Weiwei, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it is a coffee that is going to give you uh, lots of chocolate um, and caramel and uh, maybe some acidity, depending upon how you do the roasting profile. With this roast, I'm looking for kind of the darker notes of that, um, like a darker chocolate and some sweetness, I don't want any bitterness. I'm trying to avoid the bitter end of this roast profile. All right, so we are, uh, you'll see here that I kind of messed up my times that I had pre-written, and so I'm making some corrections. But we just hit first crack at 10 minutes and 39 seconds, and so now I'm watching very carefully. I want to extend my um, development time. We've moved into this third phase, which is the development phase. I marked it with the app. Uh, you saw me go up there and touch uh, that I hit first crack. And now you'll see, if you look at the app, you'll see the development time calculating. Now I press that you know, a few seconds later than when we actually called first crack. So that's a little bit behind. Um, but you can use that, look at that app. You can see what it's predicted the time to be based on the percentage. So on here, it's 12 minutes and 37 seconds, I think for a 20% development. That's what they're saying I need to go to another minute on the roaster. So I'm watching my temperatures, I'm still marking them. I'm watching my heat management and I'm making adjustments as necessary uh, because I don't want this roast to get away. One of the things about roasting coffee, even on the more, is that once you get to this point of first crack, the coffee begins to give off heat. It goes exothermic where instead of it absorbing heat, it now starts giving off heat and you can have um, your temperature increase uh, without really even changing the temperature setting on your roaster. So I'm keeping it at P4, I'm paying attention. We've got about another 30 seconds uh, or so before we, maybe we've got about another minute actually before we uh, drop this coffee. I was mistaken earlier. Still watching the temperatures, 289 degrees just went down to 288 and we've got less than a minute left and here is the countdown. I know I'm going to have just barely enough time on the Beemore. I already did my plus plus 
on the time, I believe, or maybe after it gets under a minute, you can't plus plus it, I don't remember. But I, I know that I have enough time, barely, um, before this is going to go into the cool mode. I got pretty close, actually. It was a little scary. Uh, still P4. Got 28 seconds left on the roast, but I am going to only take this another 15 seconds, and then I'm going to end the roast. I got my finger on the cool button, and I am getting ready to hit it and then open the door as quick as I can. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to get these beans cooled down as quick as possible. I could pull everything out real quick and just uh, send it into like a um, some sort of a screen or something and then put a fan on it. There's a lot of people that do that. Uh, I've got the door wide open and I've got it into the cool mode and so that's just what I did just so you guys can kind of see what's going on here with the coffee. A lot of chaff coming off. If you looked and noticed, there was a little, there was a couple little burning embers that came off on, on here, which I thought was kind of interesting. I even think I may have heard one or two snaps after the door had opened, um, probably on some really small beans that, uh, that made it to second crack. But we're clearly inside of first crack on this roast. Um, I was very happy about that. I just want to let you know that after every roast, whether it's on this roaster here or on my Beemore or any roaster that I use, I make sure that I clean up really well. Uh, I've had users say, I'm never going to use this type of roaster as long as, as there's chaff involved. And unfortunately, most coffee roasters uh, will give off chaff and you're roasting in a kitchen like I'm doing here. What I've done is I've taken construction paper. You can buy an inexpensive roll of construction paper and you tear off a sheet of it and you set that on top of your cooking area and then set the beam more on top of that. And so that way the chaff doesn't get buried down into any of your cooktop and it's easy to vacuum up. All right, I've got my coffee here, getting ready to go in for the taste. Still a little hot, I'm gonna let it cool a little bit longer. It smells really good, it's syrupy. A little bit of tobacco smell. And I'm getting some other notes. There is a little bit of a tea-like um, aroma. A little bit of a spice, like a cinnamon spice in the coffee. Uh, it looks absolutely delicious, and I'm sure it'll taste delicious, but I'm going to let it cool for just another minute. While I do that, I wanted to talk to you briefly about uh, roasting for espresso. One of the things I didn't mention earlier was that a lot of people will use a blend. They'll blend, uh, say, 80% of a Central American and 20% of an African coffee. Or they may have these, whatever the blend is that they create, it's very common to use a blend for, um, for espresso. This is a single origin, it's just Guatemalan coffee, and it doesn't even have to be a dark roast coffee, it can be a medium roast coffee. I talked about solubility, um, you know, the extraction rate for the coffee, and it, it, darker coffees extract better. So this is a not a dark roast coffee, but it's definitely uh, a real solid, well-developed, um, maybe on the darker end of medium. And this is a coffee that I'm smelling sweetness. Uh, I'm smelling some nice aromas from this coffee, but it doesn't have to be a single origin. It doesn't have to be a blend. You can do whatever you want. And the roast level doesn't have to be dark. You can do whatever you want and use it for espresso. All right, so let's go in for the taste. There is a very interesting, there's a very interesting flavor here. It's definitely a really, really dark chocolate. but I would almost describe it as like a like a cho dark chocolate brownie is what this tastes like. It's got a little bit of a, a brownie sweetness to it. 
there is maybe a little bit of bitterness um, but it's not a real bitter coffee at all you know it is dark in this um, medium to medium dark range that I went it is not um, it's not a bitter cup I am getting a little bit of a licorice and a tobacco note and it tastes tastes delicious it really I'm not as much of a, a fan for the darker notes as I am some of the lighter brighter coffees but this is a great coffee I'm really enjoying this I think the be more did a really good job and where you're gonna wanna play with this and this is really what I'd like you to do if you get a chance take a look at my other be more recipe video and you'll see that these profiles are very similar as a matter of fact we need to get to the profiles and talk about that but you'll see that when you compare these profiles they're very similar the biggest difference is the development percentage so we spent six minutes and 30 seconds with this coffee in the dry phase and that was 49 percent of the roast I took six minutes and 30 seconds I calculated that into seconds and it was uh, 390 seconds the browning phase was four minutes and nine seconds and that was 31.4 percent of the roasting process 249 seconds and development was two minutes and 36 seconds and that was 196 I'm sorry it was 19.6 percent development 156 seconds this is a uh, very similar profile to my the one that I did that uh, be more recipe and what I said in that video was if I were to do things different at least uh, changing up the profile I would shorten the dry phase that was 53 percent or 51 percent or something like that on that other video we got down to 49 percent and the biggest reason why we were able to do that was because I had that higher charge temperature and I double pre-warmed so that helped us move things along a little quicker and um, gave us the momentum that we needed to go through this roast so the profiles are very similar but more development time slightly shorter dry time and we were able to get a nice roast uh, that we could use for espresso uh, or if you like things on the uh, with really no real acidity and on the darker notes this is a great coffee this is a great recipe to give a shot to I hope that was helpful and if you like this video hit the like button most importantly you guys subscribe to my channel please if you haven't done so that really helps me out I really appreciate that that helps me continue to bring you new content regularly and I appreciate you being here do you have questions about how I use the be more today I know I broke some rules uh, you know the things that I did here I'm not recommending that you do because I know that that 250 degree charge temperature is not something that is recommended by the manufacturer um, so yeah if you've got thoughts or comments on what you saw here in this video share those and I look forward to reading those comments appreciate you being here today I hope you have a great week roasting. We'll see you next time.